smoked and drank all night. I did all right. What's going on, guys? Sean Pierce here at Broadway Tattoo Lounge, uh, South Amboy, New Jersey. Today, if you are watching this video, you're thinking about getting your cartilage done or aka the helix. Okay, it's a piercing that lies right here on top of uh, the ear, right in the cartilage section. This is a very important piercing, guys. Okay, much like the industrial, uh, it takes a very long time to heal. It's going to stay sore for quite some time. You have to make sure you take care of it. So if you're contemplating getting this piercing, dedicate yourself to maintaining the aftercare for quite some time. With this piercing, you know what, before I even go into how to do this, if you guys are thinking about getting this done and you go to the mall or a place that uses a gun, do not do that. Using a gun to do a piercing is the absolute most horrendous way to pierce, okay? A lot of people who have gotten pierced with a gun will notice throughout time that they'll develop a small little ball in the inside of their ear. That's because it's scar tissue. Scar tissue is formed on the inside of the ear because a proper piercing channel was not created. When you get done, when you get pierced at the mall and they use a gun, all they're doing is pushing the jewelry through the skin. They're not properly piercing it. A piercing is done with a hollow needle. That hollow needle creates a channel, which allows the jewelry to sit in and allows the tissue to form around it. That's the proper way to get pierced. So if you're thinking about getting your ear done, even your earlobes, go to a piercer. Don't go to the mall or get it done with a gun. And if your piercer tries to use a gun, walk out of the shop. So, first thing we're gonna do, as always, we are going to clean the ear, the area that is being pierced, front and back. Ladies, if you're getting this done, always try to make sure you bring a hair tie with you. It helps out the piercer, and it also prevents you know your hair getting in the middle of an open wound, which will cause an infection, bacteria, dirt, all that good stuff. Now there's two different types you could do. You could do a stud or you could do a hoop. It's your choice. If your piercer tells you you could only do one and not the other, leave, because he's lying to you. You could do both if you choose to. <clears throat> Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark it. Normally you want the piercing to be able to be seen when somebody's looking at you. So you wanna kinda get in there right where the crease is at. Now, if you can, you should always check it out before he pierces you. Go over to the mirror, make sure that's where you want it. If it's not where you want it, say something. Don't keep quiet. This is your body, it's not your piercer's body. Even if he needs to move it 10 times, he shouldn't get frustrated. It's your body. Make sure you know where it's going first before it gets done. Is that where you want it? You want it moved up, down? That's good? All right. Now, as always, like I've told you guys repeatedly, make sure that you guys always have a cork. If, like you saw, if something hits the floor and your piercer picks it back up, don't walk out of the shop run out of the shop let me get another cork as always make sure your piercer always has a cork once the piercing goes through the needle goes through it should get corked immediately that'll prevent your piercer from getting poked it'll prevent you from getting poked so all we're going to do real quick take a nice big breath in and a big breath out. And that is pretty much all there is to it. We'll go ahead and put the jewelry in. Now your piercer should also, especially on a butterfly clasp on the back, it should always have a little bit of room to move because sometimes that cartilage will swell up a little bit. If it's too tight, it's gonna cause complications. So it should be a little bit, the first or second click on the back is where it should be. It should be able to move up and back and forth just like that. And that is the helix piercing, or AKA the cartilage. Aftercare instructions, here we go. Pay careful attention because this is very, very important. 
This is your cartilage, like I've explained in the industrial video. It takes nine months or longer to fully heal. Okay, you're gonna get yourself a mild soap. Dove Sensitive Skin is definitely the best soap to get. Um, you're gonna wash it once a day. Get yourself some aftercare spray. H2O Ocean is probably the best spray to get. If you don't have it, you can make yourself your own uh, aftercare solution at home using a, tea, a quarter teaspoon of non-iodized sea salt and warm water, okay? Um, the reason why this piercing takes so long to heal is your entire cartilage, it lacks blood flow, okay? So therefore, in the first stage of the piercing, your blood flow is needed for that first stage to be complete. Because of the fact that it lacks blood flow, it takes a much, much longer time to heal. It's gonna be sore for a while, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, even a month. At nighttime, when you go to sleep, do not sleep on this side. You don't wanna put pressure and cut circulation off. When you talk on the phone, try to use your other ear. You wanna keep as much dirt and bacteria away from the piercing as possible. Uh, do not go, I know it's summertime, do not go in any open bodies of water or submerge it in chlorine or the ocean, anything like that. It will get infected. And that is that with the helix piercing. Talk to you guys later.